All right, you guys, so today is gonna be part two of the Hellram back to stock transformation. So if you guys didn't catch the last video, be sure to check that out. I'll link it above here. And that's where we took off the Pro Charger, took out the electric fan, drained the coolant, and got quite a bit done. We also put on the stock airbox, which I'll show you in a second, and I'll show you guys the whole status or state that we're currently in. Today, um, it's gonna be a bit of a short one, because just during a work week, uh, work night and um, I'm just gonna go ahead and probably fill up the cooling system and put back the uh, stock fan configuration so we're gonna put back on that huge mechanical fan and the electric fan and the fan shroud um, and maybe potentially top it up with coolant we'll see how long it takes but let me show you where we're at and uh, continue oh before I continue um, so yeah the part out I've gotten a lot of questions is the part out actually happening yes it's actually happening supercharger is already gone it's sold so here's the current status that we're in. We got the stock dusty airbox back on. Still have to put the stock throttle body on, but I'm not gonna worry about that for now. Uh, what I am gonna focus on, like I said, is getting that fan on there. So we're gonna have to put the mechanical fan back onto the water pump pulley. Uh, I think first things first, what I'll probably do is put the electric, the factory electric fan back on there before we put that huge shroud in there and that mechanical fan. So let me, pull that stuff out of storage. You guys can probably see the V6 electric fan sitting over there. It's not gonna be going back on. Let me get the stock stuff and show you what we got. So here's the stock components. Like I was mentioning, we have the electric fan, the big radiator shroud, and the stock mechanical fan. Just so you guys know, um, you're supposed to store them in the upright position like you see there. So this one was stored that way. I've heard some, uh, some people say that if you don't store it like that, it could mess up the fluid that's in there or whatnot, just since that's the way it's made to sit in there. Not sure how true it is, but I didn't want to find out. But what I did want to show you guys, if I can do this with one hand, is a lot of people, and one of the reasons why we went to the full electric fan, that big large fan, is because um, this one has a lot of parastatic drag on it. So you can see just like, there's a ton of resistance on this thing. Um, and it's just sitting here at kind of room temperature, but it's not like this thing spins freely. So what I'm meaning by that is that when you put this on the engine, this is essentially a propeller and this thing is constantly spinning whether you like it or not, because this is not just some free spinning thing where, um, you know, it's going to freely spin. This is constantly going to spin. Um, maybe not full lock like this clutch in, in here. This is essentially a clutch. This clutch might not be a full lock, but I mean, there's a ton of resistance on this thing. Like if I turn this, it's spinning with it, whether you like it or not. So anyways, I just wanted to point that out that when you put this on, it's like bolting a propeller on the front of a airplane engine. It's gonna spin pretty much regardless. Might not sp spin full speed, but it is gonna spin. It is gonna cause a bit of resistance on the, uh, on the pulleys and I guess the engine. So, First things first, I'm gonna put this on. I think I did actually save these weird little clips. It looks like I was nice to myself. So these little clips uh, clip on the top and the bottom of the electric fan. So I'm gonna chop these off with some side cutters and then I can drop this fan in hopefully and we can continue. So let's try and drop this in. The way this works is you guys can see the four tabs here and we're gonna keep our electrical plug on the driver's side so we can plug it in. And then we'll just finagle this in here. From what I remember, it was not fun getting it in here, but it could be wrong. It really isn't that bad, actually. There, that's it. <laughs> so that was easy. Um, yeah, that's on. Electro plug is gonna be over here, so no big deal there. And now we can go ahead and let's drop that huge thing on there, which I think that was probably where more of the issue lay, because that was uh, pretty large. Actually, let me put this clip on the top just before. So these were the clips that I was mentioning also. So these things just slide into place to hold it, I guess from any chatter. One more on the bottom, but I'll get it when I get down there. So we 
We tightened both 13 mil bolts. This is the one that was a bit more of a pain to finagle in there. I left the fan off to get it in there. I'm not sure. I think you probably could get this in with the fan in place. Um, but since it's already off, it's definitely easier to get it in and then just put the fan up from the bottom. But let's plug in our electrical connector over here. And then we'll put it on its little post there. And that's pretty much that. Now we can go ahead, get underneath, and get the fan in there. So we're one arm in it, the fan goes up like this. And if you guys can see right there, you're gonna screw it on counterclockwise because the threads are reversed. I really don't know if I could do this one with one hand, but that's what we're gonna do. Let me get a couple threads on there and then uh, we'll continue. Well, we got a few threads on and it is a pain to get that thing started for whatever reason, but she is on as you can see. And the threads are reverse threads, you guys. So 2014 truck, reverse threads. A lot of people questioned it, but um, that's what it is. I'm gonna go ahead and get this wrench in here, tighten this up. And that's pretty much the fan setup. It wasn't too bad at all. So let me tighten that up. Fan's all now tight, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the coolant back in it. So the cooling system is now full. Uh, probably have to wait till we actually start it and kind of let the air bleed a little bit. <clears throat> also have to put a bit of a uh, bit more in the overflow tank as well. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna remove that SRT badge and there's these kind of back shield things that need to go on too. So I'm gonna throw these on the back of the grill since they were uh, used to be there, but we were going for maximum airflow and we didn't need them with the Pro Charger, but these are the factory things. I'm gonna toss them back in there so you don't see those ugly uh, reservoir bottles. Well, some people liked the badge, some people hated the badge. We're gonna have to keep this, I think. I know it's not quite an SRT, but I feel like she went fast enough to earn the name, but I think we'll have to keep that. Maybe we'll put it up there in the <coughs> cork board type wall or whatever the hell that thing is called. Anyways, here's these things. Uh, i got to try to remember how the heck these things went on. I think it's something like that. I might have to take this top bracket off, unfortunately. I'm guessing it's this right way. Or maybe it goes this way. No, I think we had it. I think I have to take off the top bracket, you guys, to get these things back in there. So let me mess with it for a second, and then we'll figure it out. Yeah, so that was, in fact, the case. We had to remove some of these 8 mil bolts so that we could lift this bracket up and get it in there. So now we can probably push this down as long as we're on a smooth surface here. And just click these back into place. And that's it. Now I can put back my screws and I gotta do the other side. Okay, so those two panels are on. I'm gonna throw the grill on for now. We eventually have to take out all the lighting, the HID and stuff that we put in there, HID and LEDs. But for now, we'll just toss the grill back on. So she's somewhat complete. I do want to test out some other uh, some other lights for you guys. I want to do my last comparison on the truck. Cause I have um, I have 4,300Ks. Right now I have 5,000K in there, but I want to test out some 4,300K for you guys. So um, the grill will be coming back off, but you can see those panels in there and then just the center. So not a bad look at all. I don't know if I'm going to fully tighten these bolts, but I might just put them in hand tight just so that grill doesn't fall off. I actually did that, you guys, on my 2009. When I had, I had a 2009 Ram 1500 4x4 um, before this, and I sat the grill up here like this, and I just pushed it into place, but didn't put the four bolts, and we were standing back looking at it. It was a brand new grill, and it literally just came flopping out onto its face, and it snapped these two tabs that I'm screwing in currently, so these two, long uh, tabs that are here, it actually snapped them. So we had to do a little bit of mechanic work, but anyways, that's that look back on there. I think the only thing is the throttle body, so I'm gonna throw the throttle body on and we'll call it a wrap. Here we go with the throttle body. We still got a bunch of other stuff, you guys. Um, I still have to, uh, 
Let's also do the headers. So the headers are coming off too, but for now, this is pretty much most of the stuff in the front here. So should be pretty good. If you guys have um, ever replaced the throttle body, you gotta watch out because there's, you'll see these holes here and those are actually where there's an index. So if you ever swap it out, be very conscious of that because it makes a difference and it'll drive you nuts if you're not aware of it. And then obviously these screws, they're just threading in the plastic. So don't go crazy on them. Just like what I'm using, just a simple hand driver with an eight mil on the end. That's all you need anymore. You're risking damaging the plastic and the plastic is literally your entire intake manifold. So you really don't want to mess this up. So that's it, four screws. Double check, they're all tight. Pretty much it. And we'll throw this on. Our connector. I'm gonna push the red locking tab, like so. And then we can throw this back on here. Actually, I'm not gonna fully do this yet. I still gotta run the line that goes back to here, the hard line, um, before I put the engine cover back on. That's gonna do it for today, you guys. We got a ton done, I think, and uh, engine is looking pretty stock at this point. Uh, like I said, the headers still have to come out and the exhaust as well as the suspension, but we are well on our way to putting this thing back to stock. I do have the panel that goes here, but like I said, still got to take up the uh, HIDs and LEDs and all that stuff. And then uh, once that comes out, then we'll put the panel back in. All right, you guys, so I hope you enjoyed that video on the Rams return back to stock. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I know it's kind of a bittersweet, but I promise we are moving on to more exciting projects. And um, I was just kind of thinking about it tonight too at the same time because I've read some of the comments. Some people were a little bit uh, maybe upset or however you want to describe it, but you know, a little bit bummed out that we're moving on. But at the same time, I think we took the truck to a point where, you know, yes, the truck could have got faster, but I've said it a few times where it was getting on the border of turning the truck almost into a race truck and taking away from the practicality of it. Even with the whole supercharger setup on there, um, there's a lot of moving parts that could go wrong and it really, you know, if we took it any further, I feel like it would take away from the practicality of the truck and turn it into more of a race vehicle. And then if it gets into the race vehicle territory, then we are at a huge weight disadvantage only, not only for a truck, but because it's a four door crew cab truck with every single option almost. So the weight disadvantage just doesn't add up. So what I do want to do is get something fun a little bit more uh, performance oriented and we're gonna build on that. So it's gonna be fun guys, I promise. And things are happening fast with us just motoring through this uh, part out and whatnot. We're gonna be able to get the next vehicle sooner than later and it's gonna happen quick. So anyways, you guys, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for your support and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.